Hello. So in this video, we're going to have a look at uh, radioactivity still and looking at what's happening inside the nucleus. Now, please make sure your phones are off, TVs off, no music in the background, no phones to distract you, not playing games, etc. And you've got your booklet ready to take your notes. If you're ready, we shall begin. We're going to have a look first at what is in an atom. Um, it's going back to the basics of physics and a bit of chemistry as well. Um, and seeing what we can remember. So we have protons, they are in the nucleus. They have a plus one charge. And a one, a mass of one. It's a relative mass. Uh, sure, I put nucleus wrong there. And neutrons are also found in the nucleus. They have zero charge. And they also have a relative mass of one. They weigh the same as an, uh, a proton. And our electrons will orbit the nucleus in shells or in energy levels. They have a minus one charge. And they have relatively no mass. It's actually about one two thousandth. They do have a mass, but it is pretty much non-existent. But if we were to have a look at one, we'll draw our neutrons uh, in black and draw my protons in red. And we'll go for a nice green colour for my electrons. Just show them whizzing around there. So we've got uh, atoms there, and that's what an atom will look like, how we visualize it as a model. We've got the neutrons, we've got the protons, And we've got our electrons. And they're going around inside. Now you should be able to calculate the number of protons and neutrons on uh, in an atom. We do that by looking at the periodic table and looking at the mass number and the atomic number. If you don't know how to do that, do go back and have a look at one of the previous videos on how to calculate that. I think it's under the revision section on the on the channel. So we're going to have a little look at isotopes and what they are, because it's a useful thing to know. It comes up in chemistry and physics. So isotopes are versions of atoms that have a different number of neutrons. Um, now it's keen. The atomic number, the protons stay the same. I've got here, I've got two isotopes of carbon. Um, to differentiate them, we call them carbon-12 and we call it carbon 13. So we refer to this number, and these numbers here are the mass number. We use the mass number to identify the, um, the isotope. And you'll notice here the atomic number stays the same. So both have, if we look at the number of protons, and neutrons. We're not too fussed about the electrons at the moment. I know you can do that. The number of protons we've got for carbon 12 is 6. The number of neutrons we have is the mass number. Take away the atomic number and that gives us 6. For carbon 13 we have 6 protons still. And our neutrons we're going to do the mass number. Take away the atomic number and that gives us seven. If we had a look at carbon 14, we would do the proton number is still six. Our neutrons is going to be 14 minus six equals eight. We can see here that the number of neutrons is changing. The atomic number will stay the same. We change the atomic number, we change the element. And we're not doing that just yet. 
So, radioactive decay. So stuff we already know from uh, uh, before half term now. Some atoms are unstable. Effectively, they are too big for themselves. Uh, they're too big for their boots, you might say. Now, they will emit a particle to become stable. They'll, they'll emit something to become stable. And they can emit either a particle as either alpha, beta, or gamma. So we have alpha, beta, or gamma. Use the Greek letters there. It's A, B, C um, is what it stands for. And we're going to have a little look at those in a second. Now, hopefully you'll remember um, that an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. A beta particle is an electron. And a gamma particle is uh, an EM wave. Um, now, I know there we can get positrons as well stuff for this. Don't worry too much about this just yet. Just know it's alpha, beta, and gamma um, as the two protons and neutrons, an electron, and an EM wave. So we know that an alpha particle is made of two neutrons and two protons. Uh, if we were to write it out, we have, oops, very sorry there. Uh, I'll say as well, it's very, very ionizing, it's dangerous, um, but can only travel a short distance. Um, so you can have an alpha source in the side of your room, or maybe even in your smoke alarm in your house, um, without realizing it, although you will do soon. Um, and it wouldn't harm you, um, because inside of you, it would cause some problems. I'm just going to show you how we write out an alpha particle, showing its number of protons and mass number. We do 2 and 4, just like on the periodic table, and we have this sign alpha. Uh, so this is an alpha particle. We're going to have a look at what is happening. Now I've got here, I've got the nucleus of uranium-238 very, very unstable and radioactive source. I find it on the periodic table, I find my symbol uranium, uranium. It's got 92 protons and a mass number of 238. Now, as I said before, radioactive decay is random. We can't predict when it's going to happen. Luckily for you, though, I've managed to isolate an atom that I can predict when it's going to uh, emit an alpha particle, and that is now. There we go, we can see that alpha particle whizzing off. My uranium-238 has emitted an alpha particle. And as such, it has changed. It's decayed into something else. And it's decayed into this. And we can see that this is different. How can we see it's different? Well, I know it's different because I saw that alpha particle coming out. So I have changed to something else. I have lost two protons. I'm going to take away my two protons from my 92, and that will give me 90. I've lost two neutrons. Now, I'm not going to go, oh, I'll take two neutrons away from here. This is my mass number up here, remember. This is my mass number. It's my protons and neutrons. And I have lost two neutrons and two protons. So my number up here is now 2, 3, 4. If I want to find out what this is on the periodic table, I use my atomic number. I use my atomic number and I go through it until I find the one that has 90 as the atomic number. Luckily, the periodic table is ordered in order of atomic number. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, have a look at it now. You notice it, they all go up in increasing order, going up by one each time. Isn't that amazing? And I find that this is thorium. Uh, so it's thorium 234. I can write it there, thorium uh, two, three, four. Now, just like with chemistry and when we balance equations, we need to make sure this equation is balanced as well. So I need to make sure I've got the same number of protons and neutrons on each side. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to check. I've got 92 on this side and 90 on this side. Ah, I need another two on this side then to make it work. Now, this time we can just add things on, unlike... Um, chemistry, we can't just add things on, we can add them on in, in physics. And my mass number, I've got 234 on this side and 238 on that side, so I need another 4. I can't just have two protons and neutrons, there's nothing attached to them. I need to join them together, 
what do you know? That makes an alpha particle. So I've got uranium will decay into thorium-234 plus an alpha particle that we saw whizzing off a little while ago. Now, the thorium is also radioactive and will decay as well into something else, but that's for another day. We're now going to have a look at beta radiation. So in beta radiation, a little bit more confusing, a neutron is turned into a proton and an electron. Why is it turned into a proton and an electron? To keep the charge the same. If we look at the charges, a neutron has a zero charge, proton has a plus one, electron has a minus one. So the charges will have to still be zero at the other end. So charge is conserved on this thing. And the electron is emitted from the atom at high speed. In this case, our atomic number increases by one. We've got more protons. But our mass number stays the same. We've still got the same number of protons and neutrons. Yes, we have one less neutron, but we have one more proton, so it will cancel out. So I've got here, I've got carbon-14. Um, so if we think about carbon-14, I put a table, it's got an atomic number of 6 and a mass number of 14. Now this is going to decay by beta decay. It's going to emit out an electron. Oh, look, there it goes. High speed electron, I've slowed it down for you. We've lost that electron. And that has now become something else. We've got our beta decay. I'm just writing this on there. You don't need to write the, uh, the beta decay or alpha decay on these equations just to show that it is happening, just so we're aware. We're going to see what it has become. Now, we could try and work this out. Remember, my atomic number increases by one. This has gone up to 7. My mass number stays the same. That is 14. I could have a look on my periodic table and try and find out what that is. It is nitrogen. Let's see if we're correct. Oh, we are correct. It's nitrogen 14 on nitrogen as we find it in its most abundant form. Again, I need to make sure we've got this balanced. Now we go, okay, we've got 6 and 7. Oh, that's a bit dodge of what's going on there, 14 and 14. I need to show that I am still balancing it. Can't add anything onto this side, so I'm going to add something onto this side. To go from 7 to 6, I need to have a minus 1. My mass hasn't changed, so that is 0. Now this is an electron or a beta particle. I'm going to write it as an E, um, or I could do it as a beta particle as well. This is how we write out our equations showing the, the decays. If you're not sure about these, do go back and watch them again. Try and work out what is going on with my losing either an alpha particle or uh, a high-speed electron. We're now going to have a look at the... So I'd like to have a go at completing this question. I'll give you the number of protons for uranium is 90. Pause the video, complete the question, and then we'll go through the answers for question one. You should now only be watching if you have completed these questions. So for A, for nitrogen 14, I find nitrogen on the periodic table. My protons are 7. My neutrons, to work this out, I will do 14, my mass number, take away 7 my atomic number, and that will give me 7. B for cobalt 60, my protons, I find it on the periodic table, it is 27. My neutrons, I will do my mass number, take away my proton number, 60 minus 27 equals 33. For C, uranium-235, I've got my protons, I told you that earlier it was 90, um, I know it's not on your periodic tables, your little ones, and the neutrons, I will do my mass number, 235, uh, sorry, oh, it should be 92, shouldn't it, 92, very, very sorry, that's me messing up, 92 protons for uranium. Uh, 92 protons. 
uh, minus 92 equals uh, 146. Well done, uh, sorry, 143. Well done if you got those correct. Um, you can see that I've made mistakes on them as well. Uh, very, very easily to do. Um, very sorry about that. Well done if you picked up on it. If you went with 90, um, you would have got 145 uh, for your answer. But it's nice to find out you can now do it right. That is great. We'll now look at this second question, a little bit trickier. Um, so if you're not sure, watch along while I do it. If you want to have a go, do pause the video and then watch how I do it. So the substance contains the radioactive substance uh, 238, which emits alpha radiation. The product nucleus X emits beta radiation and forms nucleus Y. So I've gone from uranium 238 to X, which I don't know what this is, to Y, which I don't know what this is. I need to work out how many neutrons and protons are present in each one. Now, my protons and my neutrons here, I'm going to write down so I can get a tally of them going. Now, uranium 238. I know to start off with that is 92. So my protons there are 92. Um, that's the easiest part so far. I'm now going to have a look at my neutrons. So I'll do 238 minus 92, and that will give me 146. That's my first part done. Great, really, really easy. Happy with that. My product uh, it emits alpha radiation. So my alpha radiation, oh, I remember that. I've got to have a 2 and a 4 and my alpha particle. So I'll now take these away. So I'll do 92, take away 2 to get to this part. 92 take away 2 is 90. And my part up here, I'll do 238, take away 4. And that will give me 2, 3, 4. So my protons here are 90. My neutrons for this one, I'm going to have to do some more maths. I'm going to do 234 minus 90. Um, or I could alternatively do my number of neutrons here minus my two neutrons that I've lost as well. But we'll stick with this method of doing it. Uh, so 234 minus 90, and that gives me 144. And my product X would be turned to Y by beta radiation. So this is where I've got to add my beta particles, so slightly more confusing. I've got my electron with the minus one there. Now with beta radiation, we'll hopefully remember that my number of protons increases, but my mass number stays the same. So I've now got one more proton and I've got the same mass number. So my protons for here, I've now got 91 protons. And to work out my number of neutrons, I'll do 234 minus 91, and that will give me 143. I've now done that and worked it out. If you followed along with that, fantastic, well done. If you're still not sure, do let me know. Uh, send me an email that you don't quite understand it, and we'll go through some more of these. Um, because I know it is tricky, but once you can do it, you'll be like, oh, why did I find that tricky? It does just take some time and a bit of thinking about what's going on. So finally, we've got a radioactive isotope of polonium has 84 protons and 126 neutrons. The isotope is formed from the decay of radioactive isotope of bismuth, which emits a beta particle in the process. Write down the equation to represent this decay. So I'm going to write down what I know now. I've got polonium and I've got 84 there and I've got 210 for my mass number. 84 plus 210 or 84 plus 26 makes 210. I also have a beta particle. So it's my minus one and my zero and my beta particle there. To get to this, I had to start with bismuth, and I had an isotope of it. 
If I find bismuth on the periodic table, I can see that I've got 83 uh, protons. I could also work it out by going, well, that's going to go backwards. My proton number is going to decrease this time. And my mass number will stay the same. So we get 210. Um, I know this is confusing, this topic. Um, it is a bit of a challenge. We will get there. We'll do some more practice on it. Um, apologies, the booklets aren't fantastic for it. Also, apologies, this video has been quite a long one. Um, but hopefully, if you've watched it, you should be able to do the entire lesson. Um, and hopefully, you should have done it in the time allocated for the lesson, or even slightly less if you were lucky. Thank you very much for watching. And do have a great day. Take care. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.